Welcome to Starbound, where every star tells a story. What if the ultimate weapon against a ruthless alien invasion turned out to be laughter? Let's get into the story. Admiral Grayson stared at the tactical display in disbelief. The years he had put into this to get this far had carved worn lines on his face like a river carving out a canyon. Humanity had overreached, spreading too far too quickly. Their solar system with its gas giants had become targets for the Fukan Empire, full of minerals and gases to exploit. It was perfect for them. The sensor readings made no sense. The Fukan fleet had just turned up, only a few hours notice from when their long-range sensors had picked up their movement. Not enough time to evacuate, but the sensor readings made no sense. Sir, they're just sitting there. Grayson's comms officer blurted out. The Fukan flagship, their gargantuan dreadnought known as the Fist of Kral Tar, was a marvel of alien engineering. Its energy shields alone could withstand the combined firepower of Earth's orbital defense fleet. Yet, it wasn't vaporizing cities. It was listing, drunkenly, seemingly adrift in space. Sir, incoming transmission from the flagship. His comms officer's voice was strained. Grayson braced himself. The only stories he had collected regarding the Fukan was their cold, ruthless efficiency. Star systems wiped without even an acknowledgement a species even existed. Was this the surrender offer? The desperate plea for mercy? He passed the transmission through. What he heard wasn't fear or rage, but laughter. Uproarious, echoing laughter, punctuated with incoherent shouts and what sounded suspiciously like snorting. What the blaze is going on over there? Are they, are they malfunctioning? Grayson barked. I, I think so, sir. The scans show energy pulses being emitted from the main weapon array. However, it seems to be reflecting back to them. Something on Earth is resonating with their weapon systems. The comms officer seemed just as confused. Across the bridge, other officers were mirroring his bewilderment. Reports flooded in from defense satellites and civilian networks, a chaotic montage of the Fukan fleet in disarray. On screens, alien battleships twitched and shuddered. Smaller vessels collided in slapstick fashion, and some appeared to be spinning out of control, spewing trails of ionized debris. Every single targeted city, meanwhile, buzzed with the same bizarre energy emissions. But instead of devastation, the streets were alive with bewildering symphonies of laughter. People weren't cowering in fear, they were doubled over, clutching their sides, tears streaming down their faces. It was as if the intended apocalypse had been replaced by a cosmic comedy show. Sir, we're picking up garbled transmissions from across the fleet? Fukan comms are a mess. It sounds like... The comms officer paused, his professionalism momentarily crumbling. Like a bunch of kids on a sugar high watching cat videos, sir. Grayson could barely process this. The years he had been in the Space Force, he had never heard of this before. It was unnerving, expecting annihilation but being greeted by giggling. The Fukan, an energy-based species, bodies emitting a strange electrical current which charged with their emotions. They were known for being a ruthless conqueror of species and solar systems. If you had something they wanted, that was all they needed to summon the fleet, and it was already on its way claiming it for the Empire. Humor wasn't even a concept they were thought to possess. They glowed bright green with hints of red. What could possibly neutralize their greatest weapon and leave their armada in shambles? Admiral, I just got word from Geneva. The same thing's happening around the world. Beijing, Moscow, even that damn bunker complex in Tehran. The aliens, they're all... A communications lieutenant snorted, trying to contain her laughter. <laughs> They're losing their minds. Damage report. Grayson barked, needing to ground himself in something resembling reality amidst the absurdity. Minimal, sir. A, a few civilian power grids are overloaded from the Fukan's wonky energy bursts. Some comm satellite disruptions, but... The tactical officer faltered, a bewildered grin spreading across his face. <laughs> Their energy weapons seem to be useless. It seems they've incapacitated themselves. It was the most ludicrous tactical situation in history. The Fukan had just handed humanity a golden opportunity on a silver platter, but exploiting the situation, seizing the advantage felt almost wrong. Orders, sir? 
an eager glint shone in the tactical officer's eyes. Something shifted inside Grayson. This wasn't just about survival anymore. There was a chance to send a message loud and clear to anyone who dared threaten Earth. All ships, he announced, his voice resonating across the bridge. Target Fukan weapon systems and engines. Cripple them. But I want those ships intact. Disable. Don't destroy. And give me a live feed on the biggest of them, the flagship. He had a hunch the universe was about to witness humanity's counterpunch, and he wanted front row seats to the most hilarious takedown in history. Earth's response wasn't the blistering annihilation the Fukan had expected. Instead, it was cautious, calculated. Terran laser batteries zeroed in on vital components of Fukan ships, not to incinerate them, but to surgically dismember them. Weapons turrets were blasted off, propulsion systems severed, sending the massive vessels into slow, helpless tumbles. On the few occasions when Fukan crews did manage to muster a haphazard volley of return fire, Earth's ships simply danced out of the way, as if performing some bizarre space ballet. Admiral Grayson's plan was working absurdly well. The mighty Fukan warships looked like squirming insects trapped under a magnifying glass. One by one, Terran boarding parties descended upon the crippled vessels. The reports coming back were so outlandish, Grayson have expected them to be punchlines to some kind of joke. The alien crews weren't resisting. They were rolling on the floor, howling, unable to operate their own equipment. Earth's troops were having trouble suppressing their own giggles as they cautiously disarmed the Fukan warriors and placed them, for lack of a better term, under giggling arrest. Grayson had the live feed from the Fukan flagship displayed on the main view screen. And the scene was pure pandemonium. The bridge looked like a frat party gone horribly wrong. Fukan officers, normally imposing in their armored exoskeletons, were sprawled out in undignified heaps. Some clawed at their helmets as if trying to tear them off, while others seemed to be wrestling with invisible foes. And all around them, the rhythmic whoosh of their life support systems was drowned out by the deafening roar of hysterics. The image flickered and suddenly a a Fukan face emitting bright red lights from its incorporeal figure filled the screen. It sported a truly magnificent mustache that twitched violently as the creature struggled to speak through its fits of laughter. <laughs> what have you done to us? <laughs> it wheezed, tears streaming down its cheeks, the creature made to wipe its face. The Fukan commander sputtered, his voice a strangled mix of rage and amusement. Grayson, despite the overwhelming absurdity of the situation, kept his face stern. We will do no such thing. You invaded our planet. You'll remain in this condition. He gestured vaguely, unable to put a precise word to the Fukan's affliction. At this point, he was unsure what emissions he was referring to. Until we are certain your threat is neutralized. The alien's eyes, normally cold and calculating, now bulged with disbelieving horror. You! <laughs> you! You primitives could possibly have, have, have planned this! <laughs> It's... it's some sort of trick! Oh, I assure you. Grayson tried to convey a hint of the amusement washing over him, but kept his outward tone deadly serious. This is as real as your inept invasion fleet. He wasn't lying. Scientists across the globe were scrambling for answers, analyzing the bizarre energy signatures that turned the fearsome Fukan into helpless laughingstocks. Theories ranged from a biological incompatibility to a strange form of psychic defense mechanism. But no one knew for sure, and yet the answer mattered less than the outcome. Your entire armada, Grayson continued, is being systematically captured. All because you decided to attack us with... He paused, searching for the right word. An impish grin broke through despite his best efforts. With tickle rays... The absurdity of it all washed over him. Tickle rays. The Fukan war machine had been brought low by an attack so outlandish, so undignified, it defied belief. And yet it was undeniably their reality. 
The Fukan commander, likely once an imposing figure, was now reduced to a gasping, giggling heap. His mustache twitched violently in time with his sputtering laughs, and somewhere from deep within the Fukan flagship, Grayson swore he could hear the faint sound of someone shouting, Stop tickling me! Word of Earth's bizarre victory spread across the cosmos, first whispered as a rumor too ridiculous to be true, then broadcast from every seized Fukan communication array. Soon the humiliating seams beamed across the galaxy, Fukan admirals sobbing on bridges, fearsome warriors reduced to squirming toddlers, even the dreaded fist of Krautar spitting helplessly with the words, Just surrender already, scrawled across its hull in what could only be a Terran paint. The once feared Fukan Empire became the laughingstock of the galaxy. Children composed mocking nursery rhymes about their tickle beam defeat. Comedians at a hundred star systems cracked jokes at their expense. Even some of their long oppressed subject races saw the humor in it, their murmurs of rebellion growing ever bolder. Earth, however, decided that after the threat had been neutralized that it need not go for the killing blow after all. All they had were tickle rays and the humans grew up being tickled. On Earth, the cleanup was underway at record pace. The disabled Fukan fleet was towed in like a hull of absurdly overgrown fish. Their once lethal energy weapons were studied, their technology poked and prodded with a mixture of scientific fascination and incredulity. Scientists determined the root cause of the Fukan's undoing was a quirk of human neurology. The same part of the brain that processes pain also handled laughter. The Fukan had developed their weapon to overload the pain receptors, hoping to induce crippling agony and despair. Instead, it triggered a neurological feedback loop, creating an uncontrollable sensation of overwhelming joy in human subjects. What was more interesting was that this was then resonating with human brain function to emit from the very targets which they targeted. On the Fukan, it struck them as tickles. A tickle so powerful it now turned even the most staunch Fukan into a little kid being tickled by their dad. We basically tickled ourselves into saving the planet. One baffled researcher stated during a televised press conference, the footage of his straight-faced delivery of that line went viral and watched and re-watched around the world and beyond. Grayson, now known as the Laughing Admiral, found himself a celebrity. He toured newly opened academies where human cadets trained alongside Fukan prisoners learning basic tasks without bursting into fits of giggles. News crews followed him on diplomatic missions where shame-faced Fukan dignitaries mumbled apologies and paid reparations in the form of technology far exceeding their initial weaponry. He even sat for an interview on a famous galactic talk show, barely able to keep a straight face as the comedian host tried to reenact the battle using interpretive dance. Humanity did more than just survive the Fukan invasion. They thrived on it. The captured alien technology fueled a surge in innovation. New energy sources revolutionized Earth. Space travel became accessible to the masses. And advancements in medicine occurred as scientists dissected the Fukan's robust physiology. Fukan construction techniques helped build gleaming orbital habitats, and their advanced hydroponic systems helped feed a booming population. The Fukan Empire, on the other hand, crumbled. Their once ruthlessly efficient society built on fear and obedience couldn't withstand the endless mockery. Internal rebellions sparked across their domain. Long subjugated worlds finally threw off their oppressors. The tales of Earth's tickle ray victory became rallying cries for freedom. However, hope emerged from the Fukan themselves. Collaboration and not domination started becoming the Fukan way. Once cruel and efficient subjugators now changing their core teachings, Grayson watched it all unfold with a strange sense of pride and lingering disbelief. It was said laughter was the best medicine, but for humanity, it had proven to be an unexpected weapon, a catalyst for growth, and a potent reminder that the universe was far stranger and more hilarious than anyone could have imagined. Yet even as the galaxy buzzed with amusement and transformation, Earth never truly let its guard down. Humankind understood they'd been dealt a lucky hand, a cosmic fluke. To guard against future threats, whether serious or farcical, they shared the Fukan technology with a few carefully selected allies, forming the <sighs> T 
Tickle Ray Defense League, a name meant to poke fun at themselves just as much as any potential enemies. And if anyone ever doubted the story, questioning the reality of the laughing war, all humans had to do was point upwards. Floating in high orbit, visible with a good telescope, was the once mighty Fist of Kraltar, now repurposed as a galactic amusement park. It had been repainted in garish colors and a holographic projection flickered above it, showcasing a cartoon Fukan admiral doubled over with uncontrollable mirth. It was a monument to the day humanity faced down an invasion armed with nothing but laughter and somehow won. The laughing war faded into a legend, whispered in classrooms and told the wide-eyed children as bedtime stories, a testament to the galaxy's unpredictable nature and the unconventional ways a challenge might be overcome. The holographic recordings of the Fukan's hysterical breakdown, once a source of ceaseless entertainment, were now museum exhibits, still drawing the occasional chuckle from nostalgic visitors. Admiral Grayson retired a hero, his name uttered with a mix of reverence and amusement by the fresh-faced recruits he'd helped train at the academies he'd established. He led a peaceful life on a terraformed Martian outpost. His daily routine included tending to a lush garden, a nod to the advanced Fukan hydroponics that had helped humanity feed its expanding population, and occasionally granting interviews, where he always found it slightly surreal to revisit how laughter had fundamentally reshaped his life and the fate of an entire planet. Yet even surrounded by the fruits of their unexpected victory, there were moments of contemplation. Grayson had watched the once terrifying Fukan Empire dissolve into a relic of the past, replaced by the Fukan Republic. But as he stood beneath the Martian sky, observing the twinkling web of orbital cities powered by alien technology, he couldn't shake an unsettling question. Was there something else out there? Some other species in a distant corner of the universe with their own unthinkable weapon aimed at Earth? And if so, what hidden quirk of humanity might come to their rescue the next time? These thoughts weren't rooted in fear, but in a quiet, seasoned anticipation. Humanity had faced the galaxy's absurdity and emerged not only victorious, but fundamentally changed. Whatever threat loomed on the cosmic horizon, Grayson had a peculiar faith in humankind's ability to weather it not always through superior force or cunning, but with a disarming joke, an infectious grin, or perhaps even a well-timed attack of the giggles. After all, he'd learned firsthand that the universe had a wicked sense of humor, and humanity, with a little luck and a lot of resilience, had finally learned to roll with the punchline. The final news broadcast faded, the holographic image of Grayson flickering out of existence. The museum exhibit reset, the relics of Fukan technology gleaming under the stark lights, a murmur rippled through the crowd, a mix of hushed awe and the lingering echo of laughter. The story of the laughing war, once a source of boundless amusement, now held a deeper resonance. It stood as a testament to humanity's resilience and its capacity to find strength in the face of an utterly perplexing adversary. Among the onlookers, a young human girl tugged at her mother's sleeve. Mommy, is it really true? Did we beat the aliens by making them laugh? Her eyes held not only childlike wonder, but also a spark of something more, an insatiable curiosity about the world and her place within it. The mother smiled, crouching down to her daughter's level. Yes, it is. It sounds silly, doesn't it? But laughter saved the day. It shows us that sometimes the best weapon isn't always the most obvious or the most destructive. The child tilted her head, her brow furrowed in concentration. So, if I laugh really, really hard. Can I be a superhero too? The mother chuckled, ruffling her daughter's hair. <sighs> Superpowers aren't that simple, my dear, but laughter can be strong in its own way. It reminds us that even scary things have a funny side and that joy can be a powerful shield against fear and adversity. Together, they stepped out of the museum, leaving behind the relics of a war won without bloodshed. The girl glanced back one last time at the gleaming Fukan technology, the holographic admiral standing tall, a faint grin still tugging at his lips, despite the weight of past battles. Her gaze then swept across the bustling cityscape before, fueled by the remnants of a vanquished foe. A sense of optimism bloomed in her young heart, a certainty that she was born into a world shaped for the better by courage, ingenuity, and a whole lot of laughter. The future, of course, was uncertain, 
There might be other threats lurking in the depths of the cosmos, dangers that couldn't be overcome with a simple giggle. But whatever the galaxy might throw their way, humankind now possessed a newfound wisdom, an understanding of their unexpected potential, the unwavering joy at their core, and the unpredictable advantage hidden behind a simple human smile. And that smile, the mother knew, carried echoes of triumph. It spoke of a day when laughter proved more potent than any alien superweapon. A day when humanity's courage came cloaked in giggles. It was a smile that promised to face whatever challenges the stars might hold, because joy had won them the future.